after telling you that there are two types of virtue, virtue of thought and virtue of character, Aristotle spends the majority of the Nicomachean ethics talking about virtue of character. Virtue of character is associated with practical reasoning, and most of the decisions that we make over the course of our lives are about practical things, like whether to eat the bread, how much coffee to have, whether I should be trying to talk, well, the pot is boiling. I shall. In Book 2, Chapter 6, then, Aristotle gives us a definition for virtue of character. It's right there at 1107a. And it might not look particularly lovely at first, but if you just spend some time taking each part in turn, it's a simply splendid definition that I think that you'll really enjoy. The first component of virtue is that the state that decides. This goes back to the final requirement in section 4 for being virtuous rather than simply performing virtuous actions. The agent must know what the virtuous action is. The agent must decide to do the virtuous thing for its own sake. And the agent must do it from a firm and unchanging state. The state is a stable condition that we develop through the choices we make in a variety of situations, and it informs our decisions. We make our choices from the state that decides. The next part of the definition is the part that separates Aristotle's definition of virtue from almost everyone else's. Plato, for example, seems to think that virtues exist and then they have a vice. So you might have bravery and then you have its opposite, cowardice. You have generosity and then you have its opposite, miserliness. Aristotle's second part of the definition sees it very differently. Instead, he says, virtue is a state that decides consisting in a mean between two extremes. Now, if I told you that I needed the mean between two, and ten. Any of you who've done mathematics recently or are quite clever will instantly know that the mean between two and ten is six. The mean is the midpoint between two extremes. And so what Aristotle wants to say here is that a virtue will always be a mean between an extreme of deficiency and an extreme of excess. A good cup of coffee should have roughly one scoop of grounds in it for an arrow press. If, however, I only take a smidgen and put it in, well, then if I pour my water on and I make my coffee, it's going to be undrinkably weak. It won't even really be coffee at all. It will simply be brown colored water with a little bit of taste. No one wants that. So that would illustrate the extreme of deficiency. But, says Aristotle, you can also have an extreme of excess if I take this entire amount here, which is much more than simply one scoop, and I pour it all in, and then I make my coffee. Well, I have either made a cup of coffee that's so strong
strong, I shan't sleep at all for a week. Or I've made a cup of coffee and simply wasted all the extra grounds. Either way, this much is too much for a good cup of coffee. And so I'm just going to put it right back here. Now, virtue, says Aristotle, will be somewhere in the middle. But, as he points out with the third part of his definition, it's a mean between two extremes relative to us. I'm making coffee and it's the beginning of the morning. I'm going to make myself quite a stiff cup to keep myself going. So I'll load it up a little more than I would because I prefer it that way. On the other hand, if it's the late, if it's rather late in the evening, I just want a little bit of coffee to enjoy with a tasty treat before bed, then I'm going to put a little less in. And since that's the case now, I've put a little less in than I might if it were the morning. Virtue works the same way. Aristotle gives us the example of a gymnasium in training to illustrate the same thing. He says, if we imagine that two pounds of food is too little for anyone to eat in a day, and that certainly sounds like a lot, but I don't know, I don't usually weigh all my food, and ten pounds of food a day is simply too much for anyone, that seems quite plausible to me. Six pounds of food will not be the right mean for everyone. For example, he says, imagine Milo the boxer. Milo is quite a fine fellow in ancient Greece. He was renowned for his skills as a pugilist and in order to keep his strength up, Milo might need to eat eight pounds of food a day. On the other hand, as Aristotle points out, a beginner in gymnastics, someone who's just old enough now to go to the gym and begin working on their physique, should not eat eight pounds of food a day. They might not even need six. Perhaps for them, four pounds of food will be the appropriate amount. And so in the same way, virtue is a mean between two extremes relative to us. I have my coffee here and I have my hot water here. The fourth part of Aristotle's definition says that virtue is defined by reference to reason. In other words, when I decide how much water I'm going to pour in, I have to be thinking carefully about just how much coffee I want. I can't simply blindly pour. We've all done things like that, but we realize it doesn't work well. So I must choose how much coffee and how much water by using reason. So again, here practical reasoning is playing an important part in our developing virtue. Finally, Aristotle says it can't just be anyone's reasoning. After all, if I have never made coffee before, I might not be sure exactly how much to use, or I might consistently drink a little too much coffee before bed, in which case, even though I've reasoned that I want this much coffee, I need to defer to the reason that a prudent person would use. A prudent person is someone who has practical wisdom. 
they make good choices in just the situations that you're interested in. And in this case, I've just put the filter on now. Another thing that would be disastrous to leave out. The virtuous or the person with practical wisdom will be able to assist you in helping you find your meaning. The final step with making the AeroPress coffee is to press down on the plunger, therefore forcing the boiling water or water just off the boil. About a minute, I think, is best. Ah, there we go. Making a good cup of coffee requires using reason, but using reason well.